So Steve Kerr skunks the Knicks. Let's talk about what went wrong and how this all disintegrated to the point where Steve Kerr decides to sign a five-year deal in Golden State. Well, according to Steve Kerr, he says uh, one of the main things, you know, not only they have a talented roster, Steph Curry could shoot threes in his sleep, and Klay Thompson coming into his own, their playoff team. Steve Kerr says the location had something to do with it. Well, pardon me, but that's bullshit. Because <laughs> Steve Kerr, I'm sure, knows that New York, the Knicks play most of their games in New York. And that's about 3,000 miles away from his home. And, uh... You know, I'm sure he knew that before the interview process even began. So to go back and say, oh, well, you know, location, it fits perfectly. No, I don't, I don't buy that. Because if the Knicks gave Steve Kerr what he actually wanted, a five-year deal, and, and uh, the money was, I believe it was $25 million over five years, if the Knicks were going to offer that you know, or give him what he wanted, he would have went to the Knicks. But... I think what really happened, uh, if you read between the lines, uh, the, the Golden State job wasn't available at the point where Steve Kerr started talking to the Knicks about possibly coaching their team. Because remember, Mark Jackson was fired right after the playoff loss in Game 7, and Golden State had an opening then, and by then, Steve Kerr was already smitten with the idea of coaching. So I, I believe that if this Golden State job were open from the outset, Kerr wouldn't have even started talking to the Knicks. They, he would he would have just gone with Golden State. That's what I think. I, I don't you know, that's just my opinion. We'll never know. But uh, you know, that's what I think I think that, you know, Golden State obviously is a more attractive job. They have better young talent. They, they're not in cap hell like the Knicks. Their best player isn't rumored to be going to the Chicago Bulls anytime soon. And they actually keep their draft picks and they uh, mold the team with draft picks. Which, what a concept, right? That's that's how they got to be as good as they are. All their draft picks that they, they've uh, kept on the roster and they, you know, they've blossomed into good players. That's something the Knicks have no idea... Uh, they, 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 don't, they don't seem to utilize their young players. So, so that's that. I mean, what, what, uh, where does Phil Jackson go next? That's, I guess, the, the best, or the question that's on everybody's mind. What, what does Phil Jackson do now that he got skunked by one of his former players, Steve Kerr? I think by, by um, Steve Kerr skunking the Knicks, it really means one thing, that this is not a desirable job. If a rookie head coach with no head coaching experience at any level, high school, college, pro, if, if a guy like that with such a <laughs> non-resume doesn't want to coach your team, well then I don't think, it, I don't think there's a a shot in hell that a guy like uh, Avery Johnson wants to get back in there or Sam Mitchell or Lionel Hollins or you know guys that have been to playoffs been to the finals great head coaches that have accomplished something I don't I don't think they don't want they probably they probably can't even get Mike D'Antoni to get back on the Knicks right now and that's how bad this job looks so you know Mike Brown another guy that was just fired I don't, I don't think any of these veteran coaches are interested in this job. So, I, I think that the, there's certain characteristics that Phil Jackson will be looking for in, in his next rumored search to find the head coach of the Knicks. It's going to have to be a rookie coach. It's going to have to be a coach with no uh, NBA head coaching experience. He may have been a college coach or a high school, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever. But hopefully they don't get a high school coach. I mean, Jesus, it, it's come to the point where you know the Knicks are such a fuckery. I wouldn't be surprised if they hired a high school coach. But 
you know, it has to be a rookie coach that I think Phil may have designs, may have an itch, may have an interest in coaching again. So this rookie coach is going to have to have the ability to eat some humble pie. And if Phil wants to get back on the bench and coach again, he can just slide back over and be an assistant. You know, so again, the veteran coaches would not want to be a part of that, that type of a circus. You know, I, I, can't, I can't fathom a veteran coach wanting to be a part of that. You know, I'm just going to sit here and, and, and wait for Phil to get physically ready to coach the team, and then I'm going to just slide over and be an assistant. Avery Johnson ain't having that. Hollins ain't having that. You know, you could, you could even go back. Jeff Van Gundy probably wouldn't even be interested in being a part of that. You know, it, it, would, it would be a, a circus all over again for Van Gundy to get back involved with the Knicks. So, the second thing I would look at is a characteristic that Phil is looking for. He has to be familiar with the triangle offense. He has to have had experience with the triangle offense at some point in his career. That's what the next coach is going to have to have. So, you know, that, that these two big main characteristics, they rule out a lot of guys. Mark Jackson, I don't think, is a candidate. He doesn't have the triangle experience. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of coaches that I just, I look at this list and I say, nope, 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 nope. This is a very small list. And I think number one on that list, head coach of the New York Knicks, the number one candidate right now, now that Steve Kerr has effectively skunked Phil Jackson, he's a, he's a player right now. He's still playing in the playoffs for the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm talking about Derek Fisher. He fits the characteristics that, that Phil's looking for. And plus, he was a, he's a point guard. And those guys are usually the quarterback of the team. And I look at that, I, I tend to have my own bias about coaches. I think point guards make better coaches. Of course, you know, all of you people out there in YouTube land are going to, oh, what about Isaiah Thomas? This guy's a garbage coach, you know, and whatever. And I guess that's a totally different topic for another time and place. But I, I tend to think point guards, since they are, you know, coaches on the floor, those guys make the best, you know, coaches. So a guy like Kurt Rambis uh, that uh, has ties to Phil Jackson, I don't think that would fit. And uh, it's just, that's my opinion. Let's see if I'm right. That's my call. I'm calling it right now on May 15th that uh, Derek Fisher will be the number one candidate for the New York Knicks head coaching position. Let's see if he even is interested I think uh, he'd have a better opportunity to win a title sooner if he actually comes back and plays for the Thunder next season. So let's let's see where that goes for now. But uh, that's my take on it. It's Football Rob signing off.